over the weekend, I watched Transformers Rise of the Beast, and I was really excited to see it because I was really excited to get another live-action G1 movie. And I, I'm not gonna say I was, dis I was disappointed in it because it wasn't a bad movie. It just wasn't the best movie. Part of the reason was because I was really holding out for a live-action G1 Megatron. I, I, I really was. People kept telling me no, he wasn't in it. I kept thinking, well, maybe he's gonna be in it, and he wasn't. I, I really want a live-action G1 Megatron voiced by Frank Walker at some point. Please make it happen. I really want to see it. But back to the point of the video. Um, I just watched Transformers: Rise of the Beast over the weekend. Decent movie. Uh, it wasn't the best. Now, my biggest gripe with it is Optimus doesn't seem like Optimus in that movie. If you don't know, like, Optimus' character, he's supposed to be, like, understanding and more than, like, the kind, like, he's kind, he's kind to humans and, and everything. But, like, in this movie, he's just kind of an asshole, you know, a good chunk of the time. Honestly, it does kind of just, uh, bother me a little bit because that's not who Optimus is. Optimus isn't the whole, uh, you know, asshole type. He's the gonna, he's gonna be the one who, like, you know, he meets the humans and he's, like, welcoming. In this movie, he's, but he's, uh, he's upset with the humans. They play it off to have Optimus be upset because they've been stranded on Earth for the past seven years. Because if you don't know, Rise of the Beast takes place after the Bumblebee movie. Because Bumblebee takes place in 87 and then Rise of the Beast takes place in 94. And Optimus is like upset because they're stuck on Earth and they can't get back to Cybertron. And he wants to go back. Now I can understand that. It's just, they, compared to like how he acted in Bumblebee... And, you know, even in the Babyverse movies, which are their own, their, their own, their own type of thing, their own universe, he's always been that, like, kind, that kind body, that kind persona. And in this one, he's just like, oh, fuck the humans, basically, and shit like that. He goes, so it was really weird to just see him to be that not kind persona. I don't know how else I want to say it, to be honest. It's just, he's not, like, I guess, optimistic, in a way. I, I, I guess I'll say that. But, um... That was one gripe. The other thing that I saw a lot of people complaining about that I don't have a problem with is Mirage. I actually thought Mirage was pretty good in that movie. Um, they kind of like, the way he acts with the main character Noah is some people were just like, oh, it, you know, that's, they're just trying to copy Sim and Bumblebee. I mean, I don't know. I really liked the way Mirage was in that movie. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was a joy to watch. I think he had some pretty good moments. The only gripe I have with Mirage, and I don't know if I should be saying this, but the movie's been out for about two months. So I think I'll go ahead and say it is Mirage gets killed by Scourge. But then Noah rebuilds Mirage, and Mirage comes back. And I wouldn't have a problem with that, you know. We've always had a thing with Transformers dying and coming back. The problem is, both Autobots that die in that movie, because, spoiler alert, Bumblebee dies too. He dies at the hands of Scourge, and he comes back too. They both come back to life, and at that point, it's like, well, what the, what the fuck are you doing? Because the movie loses a little bit of its seriousness when both Bumblebee and Mirage, who both die, get to come back to life. So, I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing to ha kill them both off, just to bring them back later. And I know they did that with Optimus and Revenge of the Fallen. Like, the whole point of the second movie, the whole point of Revenge of the Fallen was Optimus dying and retrieving the Matrix of Leadership to revive Optimus. Bumblebee and Mirage dying, just to be in uh, revived later, has no significance to the movie. Now, I shouldn't say that, I should say, Bumblebee coming back, he does come back and save Optimus. Mirage is dead in the, in the final battle, and Noah is able to rebuild him. Now, I don't know a lot about Transformers. I, I really don't. So I don't know if that's, like, because the way Mirage is. The kids, he, he's, like, he's able to, like, the Mirage, basically. He's able to, like, contour his body. Like, he can transform into different, into different vehicles and shit without having to scan them and whatnot. I, 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 I honestly don't have the full understanding of Mirage yet. Because I seriously just got into G1 uh, a few months ago. I'm still learning all the fucking Transformers, like, all the powers. Because in G1, it's actually pretty crazy. Because, like... All the Transformers, aside from being, you know, giant alien robots that transform, they also have, like, powers. Like, for one, all the Decepticons can fly without having to transform into jets. I don't know if just because Mirage has the ability to, like, shapeshift and whatnot that it's easy for him to be rebuilt. I don't understand. I don't fully understand it. But I still enjoyed Mirage throughout the movie. I thought it was fucking... I thought it was great. There is one particular scene, though, I really want to talk about because this scene had my friends and I laughing at, like, four in the morning for an hour. We rewound this scene, I think, about 40 times just to watch it. And that is Scourge's blank expression when Optimus is shoving his head into a moving part of that teleporter that's bringing Unicron to Earth. And if you don't know what I mean, I'll show you the scene. Let's end this once and for all. Master, the reinforcement. That little snippet right there had my friends and I laughing for, for, for like an hour at four in the morning. Rewinding that scene constantly. Because it just, it's so funny. Because he's sitting there, he's getting his head shoved into a moving part of, of that ship, or that teleporter, 
it has the most like blank expression on his face. He's he's, he's just sitting there, just this master, the reinforcements. He's just fucking sitting there. Like that's such an odd reaction to have when you're getting like you're getting your head shoved like like that. I I don't I don't know. It's just it's it's so funny. Um, I it's it's hysterical. I, I I enjoy it. Now the scene is followed by Optimus doing his fucking badass. I'll show you the real power of a prime. And he fucking, like, stabs Scourge in the head. Now, that's badass in itself. That is fucking awesome. That scene beforehand, because that's, like, right after this scene. And it just kind of gets overshadowed by that for me and my friends. Now, I'm not going to say it's a bad movie. Like, I'm not going to tell you if you haven't watched it to not watch it. Like, watch it. By all means, go watch it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, you like it. By all means, do what you want. I just got to talk about it because, for me, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie for the most part. There were certain things that had me, like, what meh and what the hell and, you know, but... I still like seeing live-action G1 Optimus. I, I, I really do. And anytime I get to see Optimus voiced by Peter Colling, I'm going to watch it. Whether it's in video games or animated shows or the live-action, I have to watch it because, honestly, it's, it's, it's I, I love it so much. Now, to be honest, I think the opening scene to Bumblebee is the greatest piece of live-action G1 we got. Like, I, I just I think it's beautifully done. The whole battle for Cybertron, I would give anything to have a full movie based on that. I mean, it was so well done. Uh, I'm a little sad that I got into Transformers really, really late because I can imagine how a lot of those diehard Transformers fans felt seeing that Battle of Cybertron in the Bumblebee movie because it's beautifully done. It, it really is. But my ultimate wish is to see a live-action G1 Megatron voiced by Frank Walker. If you don't know, Frank Walker is the original voice of, Me of Megatron in the original TV show. I really want to see that. I, I really want to see him back. I hope we get that chance because I think it's... I would love to see it. But Rise of the Beast... Decent movie. I'm not gonna say it's the best. I'm not gonna say it's the worst. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now the movie does end with something that's like really insane, and that is hinting at a crossover to GI Joe. And I didn't know about this. I talked to a friend of mine who knows all this stuff. Um, in the '80s, Transformers and GI Joe were like top comics and toys. As, you know, if we're not focusing on Star Wars, and they had a lot of crossovers in the '80s in the comics and whatnot. And so, evidently, what they're hinting at a movie that's going to feature the G.I. Joe... G.I. Joes? I, I don't know what the plural for G.I. Joe is. Um, and the Transformers. And honestly, I'd be down to see that. Now, I wasn't much of a G.I. Joe fan growing up. Like, I, I watched the show. I watched the show. Um, I just... G.I. Joe wasn't something that I liked watching growing up. But I'm very excited to see it. If, if they go through with it. Because this wouldn't be the first movie that hinted at something and then they never did it. So, we'll have to wait and see. But this movie is a decent movie, I think. If you like it, you like it. I love that. If you don't like it, if you, if you don't like it, then you don't like it. For me, I thoroughly enjoy it. I can sit down and watch it, but it's not giving the top Transformers movie that I'm going to want to watch. For live action, I definitely have to pick the Bayverse movies. I, I really would. But for animated, I'd have to go with either Transformers Cybertron, which is the 2005 show. Uh, War for Cybertron, The Siege, the Netflix series, which I know a lot of people didn't like, but I've been watching it and I haven't had an issue with it. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not too deep of a Transformers fan. I really don't know. Um, the the original 80s movie, the Transformers, the movie from 86, top Transformers movie. That one has got to be the best Transformers movie that's ever been made, if I'm being honest. But that's what I want to talk about in this video. Transformers Rise of the Beast, decent movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you later in the video. Have a good day, and as always, stay awesome. <laughs>